until the next time someone wants to critique your parenting skills. Auntie Shark. Auntie Shark. Get yourself off the hook, mama. <coughs> Hello. Hello to all of you positive parents and welcome back to my channel. So this video is meant to address the mommy guilt that we typically feel when we discipline our kids. Although we know that discipline is necessary to provide teachable moments and to help eliminate some of those problematic behaviors, there is an old saying that this is gonna hurt me way more than it hurts you. Well, that's because inappropriate or ineffective discipline can really cause emotional or physical distress to all individuals involved. During my personal journey of finding alternative ways of discipline, I noticed a few things about me. Um, so I'm typically a very meek, mild, just really reserved, calm person. Not a lot can really um, force me to raise my voice or to scream, yell. Not a lot can force me to put my hands on anyone. I am pretty zen, if I do say so myself. But I noticed when it came to my parenting, I found myself yelling a lot. Wait it. I hated the way I felt afterwards. And I even more, I hated the way my son felt afterwards. So I made a conscious decision that if I'm not going to lose my cool and yell at my boss, if I wouldn't yell at my friends, if I wouldn't yell at my coworkers, and if we can have a functional relationship, then I'm going to take that same mindset and put it towards my children why shouldn't i show that same grace to my children okay so here are four ways to get your kids to follow directions without yelling or spanking ready for them here they go so the first thing you want to do is you want to establish the rules and make these and set clear expectations so i know i've mentioned this a lot um, in previous videos, when talking about positive reinforcement, you want to set um, the same expectations when it comes to punishment. So the child should know what the consequences are if this behavior continues, right? So we talked about all of that. We know that. Within this step, it's very important for you to, you want to make sure that they can do the requested task. So there is a big difference between they can do this and they don't want to do this. Before you start implementing any rules, any consequences, any punishments, before you start handing out punishments, you need to make sure that your kid can actually do that behavior that you're expecting of them. Can they actually sit at a table for 30 minutes without moving? Can they do that? Or are there internal stimuli in them that just makes them just run like a motor? And they actually do that math problem. I know they've been avoiding math and they really don't want to do homework. But have you taken the time to break down that specific division problem to see, do they even understand this common core? There's something I can do on the front end. Can I get you a tutor? Can I break it down? Can I get you a calculator? Can you actually do this behavior are all really good questions to ask before even setting those expectations can my son or daughter even do these things okay can they do these things all right number two two is extinction procedure so this is actually a really easy step for moms if you do it the right way okay extinction procedure is when you withhold reinforcement until the rules or the instructions are followed. For example, if your son is screaming or crying for your bag of chips, let's say you had a bag of chips and your son and he's screaming, <laughs> but instead you want him to ask for the chips. You have no problem with giving him the chips. 
we're not depriving him of chips, but you don't get chips from screaming and yelling at me. I'll give you chips if you ask nicely. And that's exactly what I would say to him. So you would say, hey, son, if you want some chips, please ask for chips or say chips, please. Boom. Good job. You said it. Here are your chips. Right? So let's say they don't ask for chips. And they're still screaming and they're crying. But you know that they can ask for chips because in the past you've seen them do it before. But today, for some reason, they're just deciding I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to use my calm voice. I'm going to scream and I'm going to yell. Hey, mom, that's when we implement the extinction procedure. You may have to model this for them. Yes. Say chips, please. Chips, please. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Say chips, please. Chips, please. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you may have to set that expectations, and then you're done. Mom, you don't have to do anything else. Extinction procedure means you're withholding your attention. You're withholding the chips. You're going about. This is the opportunity where you want to be as unbothered as possible. Take this opportunity to be the calm in the room. If the child is yelling, we are not. We Until are Until the child follows the instructions and actually asks for chips, we don't have to attend to the behavior at all. It's as like it's not even happening. We are placing that behavior, that crying and screaming behavior, we're placing it on extinction until the child asks for chips appropriately, okay? Once they've stopped crying, that's the opportunity to catch them being good. Oh, you're using your quiet voice now? Thank you. Did you want some chips? Oh, okay, why don't you ask me for chips, please? Oh, okay, yeah, here's your chips. You notice one thing I didn't do? Um, I didn't say, oh no, you don't get no chips now. You been crying for the last five minutes. You think you gonna get some chips? You think you'll get some chips for me? And you just been crying and you just did it. No, no. The behavior is done. They, they appropriately ask for what they wanted. They should be able to get access to those chips. Mom, moms, listen to me. Sometimes our kids engage in certain behaviors and we really take it personally. They are little people and sometimes they need a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance. Whenever they get it right, we still want to provide lots and lots of reinforcement, okay? Um, so yeah. Side note, we never, ever, ever want to withhold food like a meal as a punishment. So that would be considered neglect or even potentially abuse, okay? So the example that oh, an additional treat, an extra dessert, an extra snack, we can use those as reinforcers, but I would never use food or sustenance um, and withhold that as a punishment. We never, ever, ever. So the third way to get your kids to listen or follow instructions without yelling or spanking is using the response cost procedure. So response cost is whenever the child engages in the undesired behavior, whatever it is, the problematic behavior, then they lose access to a reinforcer or an activity. They have to nest they have to pay a fine. It's just like if you were to were to run a red light and the red light violation camera thing sends you a nice little ticket in the mail. Um, and now you have to pay for you engaging in that problematic behavior. Same with our kids. For example, if a child is hitting his little sister during dinner, um, you may say, hey, we keep our hands to ourselves. If you hit her one more time, I am taking away your dessert. You can lose 
iPad time, you can lose screen you lose time, TV time, that activity that you were looking forward to, that birthday party that you were scheduled to go to, all of it is gone. You lose privileges or you lose activity. A little side note for that. You don't want to take away all of the privileges at the same time. When you take away all of the privileges, then a response cost is not gonna have any way to work in the future um, because they have nothing else to lose. You never want a child to feel like they have nothing else to lose and you've taken away all of the reinforcers in their environment. That's pretty harsh. A lot of our black children who exhibit higher rates of problem behaviors, um, it's typically because they don't currently have a reinforcing environment and they have nothing else to lose. Hey, if I get into a fight or if I get into several fights, what's the worst that can happen? What, I'll get suspended from school? So what? I don't wanna be at school anyway. Oh, what, I may get a whooping from my mom? So what? I've taken a worse beating before anyway. I have nothing to lose and I have nothing that is motivating me to do better. That is a very slippery slope. But if the environment is naturally enriched with so many reinforcers, so many motivational operations, so many opportunities, trust me, nobody wants to lose those big valuable reinforcers. So let's say, hey, if you get into a fight, you're gonna lose your scholarship. You're going to lose that internship. You're going to lose out on um, opportunities to go to your favorite um, field trip at the end of the week. That is going to motivate that individual to stay on the right track. Personally, we have to use basketball as incentive for my son to stay on track or get his homework done. And that's just a natural consequence. I'm sorry. But if you do not get your homework done, you cannot go to basketball practice, bro. We are not doing that. And that is incentive enough. That is motivation enough for him to get his to get his work done because he doesn't want to lose out on the opportunity to play basketball. But there are also a lot of things that I've set in place to help completing homework an attainable goal for him. So you help support him on the front end and then <laughs> and with the functional appropriate punishment procedure, but I don't have to lose my cool to do it. I don't have to raise my voice to do it. I don't have to raise my hands to do it. We need to work on enriching the environment and motivating our black children, not just to avoid punishment, but opportunities to access reinforcers. Hey, if I go the entire semester without fighting, then I get access to the honors lounge, pizza party, chance the rapper celebration concert here at the school. We need to find ways to enrich the environments of our little black children and not always have them avoiding or escaping punishment. The fourth and final way to ensure that your kid follows instructions without yelling or spanking is you want to make the goal attainable. Let's say after all of this, you're still noticing that your kid is having a tough time, a difficult time following instructions. You can use something like a behavior shaping technique to help you in this area. So this means you can just break that step down into smaller steps and provide reinforcement as they reach each of those steps. For example, if you want your son to sit at the dinner table while you're out having a family dinner, this is something that you may want to break down into smaller steps. So I know for black families, for a lot of families, but I know personally for black families, this is a cultural thing. We love going out to eat. We love having a party of like 20, 25, just everybody come out and we're gonna sit, we're gonna eat. And then after we're done eating, we're gonna sit and we're gonna talk for a long time, okay? 
And that's just what we do. If you have a little one who is experiencing challenges, sitting at a table for long periods of time, you may have to meet them where they are and compromise. This is where cultural competency meets efficient, effective ABA practices. Okay, so you can require him to sit at the table only for 30 minutes. Okay, so once he has sat at the table for 30 minutes without crying, then you give him a break and you take a walking break. This means you can walk to the front lobby, you can walk to the bathroom, you can walk outside if you want to. Wherever he wants to go, you're going to take a walking break. Once you're done, you bring him back to the table and you require him to sit for another 30 minutes. You can even set a visual timer and say, hey... We're going to sit here for another 30 minutes. Once we're done, then we're going to take another walking break. This way you are breaking that huge dinner down into smaller segments where he can actually meet the goal of sitting and engaging with family. So if your child is having difficulties even meeting that 30 minute expectation, this is where you come in and you enrich the environment with lots of reinforcers. So the restaurant naturally does this. When they give you a kid's meal, you open it up. There's a coloring page. There are probably uh, crossword puzzles, a word search, maybe a maze, crayons. Um, some restaurants even have the little tablet. They know that sitting at a table for a long period of time for kiddos is hard. So they give you ways to enrich the environment to make that waiting behavior less averse. Um, I know moms who will order the food and specifically say, bring my kids food out first, please. I think this is genius, okay? Because you can't really expect any child to follow instructions when they're hungry. I mean, I can barely walk straight when I'm hungry, okay? So you want to make sure that you are meeting all of your child's needs. You want to make sure you support them. You want to make sure they actually can do this. You want to make sure the goal is attainable. Set the expectations, all of those things, right? That's how you set them up for success. If they still engage in that behavior, if they still aren't listening, if they still aren't following instructions, that's when you hit them with punishment procedures. All right. So I am closing out, but I wanted to end with this. When you are the mother of a child with special needs or the mother of a child with autism, Sometimes, if we are honest with ourselves, it can come with a lot of shame. And we really are just trying to protect our kids, but we really have to stop parenting for the audience, okay? So what I mean by that is we care too much what others think and no one needs to be impressed by your parenting skills, okay? So the next time someone wants to critique your parenting skills, just say, we're still in training. But thank you. If you enjoyed this video and are looking for more ways to be a positive parent or add ABA to your everyday life, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.